Prime Minister Brown calls for the OECS to jointly purchase Scotiabank's operations up for sale. Pledge funds slow in coming. Prime Minister Brown provides update to OECS Assembly on hurricane recovery efforts. Mehul Choksi gets leave to appeal a ruling of the High Court in his legal fight against extradition to India. And government remains resolute on redistribution of 850 megahertz spectrum. ABS News at 7 starts now. Local Evening News is brought to you by Nagico, local agents, Bryson's Insurance. Hello, good evening on this Monday. A warm welcome to the Evening News. I'm Garfield Burford. And I'm Sharon miller -Jazz. Well, Thanks for joining us tonight. Our top story, almost two years after the passage of Hurricane Irma, Prime Minister the Honorable Gaston Brown shares updates on Barbuda's progress at today's sitting of the OECS Assembly. Indeed, Sharon, we have comprehensive coverage of what took place at the Parliament Building of Antigua and Barbuda today with the OECS Assembly. Here's our first report from ABS's Rakib Aparicio. We had the unfortunate situation in which the assets in Barbuda, neither public nor private assets in Barbuda, are insured. And as I said, 95% of the building were destroyed. PM Brown says the United Nations Development Program, or UNDP, estimated the cost to be roughly EC $600 million. He says through CARICOM, a fledging conference was held at the United Nations to support the devastated island. He says pledges amounted to roughly $2 billion U.S. dollars. Well, you know, pledges and what is collected. Two different issues altogether, two kettles of fish. He shared just how much monetary support we actually received as of December 2018. So far, in assistance, grant aid, we would have collected in the region of about 28 million EC dollars. I'm talking about real pledges now, not the bogus ones. We still have perhaps another 10 million US dollars in pledges. Prime Minister Brown says the government has continued to push for the redevelopment of Barbuda regardless of lack of monetary support. He believes there was only so much the government could do. If, if, the, if the properties were insured, then the recovery would have been faster. The Prime Minister is proud of the progress made in recovery efforts so far. Of the 1,100 homes that were damaged on Barbuda, we have restored over 500 homes. Prime Minister Brown says within the next 12 months, an additional 300 to 400 homes will be repaired. Rakib Aparisi reporting for ABS News. Thanks, Rakib. Meanwhile, St. Vincent and the Grenadines intends to use its new position on the United Nations Security Council for the betterment of small island developing states. That's according to the Honorable Camila Gonzalez, St. Vincent and the Grenadines representative to the OECS Assembly. He's a son of Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez and also that country's finance minister. He shared some of the issues the country will be tackling at the, uh, General Assembly, uh, at the UN Security Council. The security implications of climate change the illicit trade in small arms and light weapons, the illicit narcotics trade, the consequences of human trafficking and the refugee crises that are increasingly encroaching on our own region. Of course, St. Vincent and the Grenadines will sit on the UN Security Council as representative for Latin America and the Caribbean for the next two years. It will assume the position on the 1st of January next year and will come off at the, at the end of 2021. Mehul Choksi has succeeded in his request for leave to appeal a ruling of the High Court in his ongoing battle to block his extradition to his native India. Now, his lead attorney, Dr. David Dorsett, tells ABS News he has 21 days to file the appeal. Choksi, an Indian diamond mogul who received Antigua and Barbuda citizenship through the CIP in 2017, is challenging a ruling of the High Court, which refused requests to have an expert in the Indian extradition law testify in the matter. We'll have more on this developing story as information becomes available. More from the court now, because the Court of Appeal has reduced the sentence of two men who were serving life at Her Majesty's prison. Lasana Riley and Gervani Richards were convicted of the murder for, of murder for killing 24-year-old Rondell George in 2010. 
Riley fired his weapon once, killing George's as, uh, George as he and Richards robbed the butcher during an ambush in Bendels. The bullet also struck and injured Kelvin Galloway, who was riding in a pickup with the deceased at the time of the incident. Now, the appellants were both convicted of murder on the principle of unlawful joint enterprise. While the court upheld the convictions, it ruled the sentences were excessive, as life imprisonment should only be imposed for the worst kind of cases. It says, considering all the circumstances of this case, it cannot be said that either of the appellants are beyond rehabilitation. Accordingly, Riley, who fired the fatal shot, is now serving a sentence of 35 years imprisonment. He'll come up for a review after serving 20 years to see if he's eligible for early release. Richards, who did not fire his weapon, has received a new sentence of 25 years with review for early release after serving 15 years. Let's say with these convicted armed robbers, Daryl Wilson and Melville Samuel also got some time knocked off their sentences at the Court of Appeal hearing today. Both men were serving 20 years imprisonment for their roles in the robbery of Midway Service Station in 2013. Masks were used as the men made off with a gas station's money bag in the daring daylight robbery. Samuel, who was employed at the establishment, is said to have masterminded and executed the heist. Wilson served as a getaway driver. After considering the circumstances of the case, the Court of Appeal reduced Wilson's sentence from 20 to 15 years, while Samuel's 20 years was reduced to 16. Well, police are continuing investigations into the motor vehicle accident, which took place on All Saints Road Sunday night. A two-vehicle collision has left a mother and child hospitalized at the Mount St. John's Medical Center. Now, the toddler, who suffered a broken leg, was a passenger in the black Nissan, driven by her mother, who complained of pains about her body. The male driver and passenger, a woman and a toddler of the Silver Honda Accord, have been treated and discharged from the hospital with minor pains and bruises. Now, reliable sources told ABS News the Honda Accord was driving from east to west, heading towards Potter's Main Road, and the Nissan was headed west to east towards Licks Limited when the Nissan vehicle attempted to overtake another vehicle and collided with the Honda Accord before veering off the road. Well, take a look at this. An accident that caused a traffic jam. Here it is on Cross Street near YMCA. Drivers had to divert to their route for about 40 minutes after the accident occurred at about 2.30 this afternoon. Well, the navy blue APUA Toyota truck was traveling south on Cross Street when the vehicle in front of it stopped. And according to the APUA driver, he also came to a standstill. However, when the driver in front of him began driving again, he says he remained stagnant. Now, at this point, the yellow Mack truck that you saw in that previous video carrying a trailer turned at this intersection and the vehicles collided. Fortunately, no one was injured. Well, on to a major developing story at this hour. Prime Minister the Honorable Gaston Brown has called for the organization of Eastern Caribbean states to jointly purchase the operations of Scotiabank. Absolutely, Sharon. That's at least the operations which are up for sale for Scotiabank in nine territories, including right here in Antigua and Barbuda. He was making his contribution to a motion on de-risking in the OECS Assembly at the Parliament Building in Antigua and Barbuda this afternoon. Here's a look at what the Prime Minister had to say. Now let us start our own OECS or Caribbean bank. Maybe a bank that eventually could even set up a branch in the United States one in Canada and the United Kingdom to provide the very corresponding banking services that have been plaguing the region. All right, so that was a major developing story, yes, Sharon. Absolutely. You know, he says this could create a banking operation with combined assets of about two billion U.S. dollars. This could give greater leverage in securing correspondent banking relations. Yeah, absolutely. Well, the Prime Minister argues that this could provide a further boost to the economy of the currency union. There you go, the Prime Minister mm -hmm. uh, talking there, uh, that one, uh, there's a slight glitch in that audio there, but the Prime Minister indicating that it could have so many implications mm -hmm. uh, for the boosting the economy of the currency union and also ensuring that more profits from that banking operation are retained in the Eastern Caribbean currency okay. union. Uh, so right. the members of the OECS Assembly were united in expressing concern about the loss of correspondent banking relations in some territories as well. Right, well the large banks in North America and Europe engage sometimes cut ties with their respondent banks because 
They are concerned about the risk of money laundering and also other crimes. Now, this happens through a process called de-risking. De-risking, that was a major issue of debate at yes. that OACS Assembly meeting today, Sharon. That was a subject of a motion that was unanimously agreed by all the members mm -hmm. that they were expressing concerns about the challenge of de-risking, which is, they, they call it an existential threat mm -hmm. to all the members okay. of the OACS. All right, let's tell you about more developments from the OECS Parliament because, uh, meanwhile, the Premier of the British Virgin Islands, Andrew Fahey, has commended Prime Minister Donald Gaston Brown for crafting a document regarding the de-risking threat in the region. Well, Prime Minister Brown also used a document to outline a 10-point plan to deal with the issue. Now, Premier uh, Fahey wants young people to learn from the Prime Minister's document. Listen. Because it breaks it down so simple that uh, the smallest a child can understand it. And this is needed because it, it helps our, our young people to understand uh, what we are fighting. So I don't, uh, somehow we don't need to only have this on the record of, of this assembly, but we need to get it into the classroom setting with a, uh, online so that they can understand what's happening with the risking. Mm -hmm. So some of the excerpts there from that OECS assembly a meeting right. today at the Parliament building. Of course, tomorrow is the time for the OECS authority to have its meeting, where well, that's the heads of government of the member states of the OECS. And that meeting takes place, Sharon, at the Royal okay. Antigua. Okay, we look forward to it. Lot to cover, huh? Absolutely lots right. to cover. So much more to come on the ABS Evening News, including... Well, Prime Minister provides major updates on the move to redistribute space on the 850 megahertz spectrum. Plus, we have encouraging news about the baby found abandoned on a gallery in March this year. Remember that story? Mm -hmm. We'll have a heartwarming update ahead on the ABS Evening News, on air and online. At Najico, the things that matter to you matter to us. Like knowing you're covered when your house gets flooded. Getting your settlements quickly and fairly when a fire hits your home and making sure your business can keep going, even after an accident happens on site. At Nagico, we're about much more than just insurance. We're about the big things and the small things that mean everything. This season, experience all the sports you love. Whether on a large screen or a mobile device, you've got the best seat in the house. Share the moment with you and your family from wherever you are with the latest products from Quartz. Get it now with Ready Finance. Don't miss a moment of the action. It's Sports Mania at Quartz, bringing value home. Special conditions apply. They're coming for your home from every direction. Rain, sun, mildew. Now's the time to fight back before it's too late with Berger Weatherproof Ultra. It's built for battle. Whatever the weather, extreme protection with a seven year warranty to keep your home's exterior looking and feeling invincible. Weatherproof Ultra from Berger for lasting beauty and protection. Thank you so much for staying with us right here on the ABS Evening News. Let's continue with news that the government remains firm on its decision to redistribute the 850 megahertz spectrum among all three telecoms operators. At present, it is shared between Flow and Digicel, but the government is moving to ensure the APUA INET also shares the lucrative band. Prime Minister Leonardo Gaston Brown provided that update to ABS News, even as Flow and Digicel seek the intervention of the courts on the matter. We have now chosen to bring in an external company that doesn't have any skin in the game to advise us, an independent company, whether or not the spectrum can be shared. And uh, we indicated to them that we will give them another 90 days before we take any action and that will allow for the formal study. On the basis that the study confirms what was said to us earlier by you know, several experts, then I can tell you we will not relent. Uh, Digicel and, and Flo will have to share that space. I mean, more details are expected to unfold in this story later this week. We'll keep across it for you, rest assured. Well, Prime Minister Gaston Brown says the University of the West Indies Council has unanimously accepted the government's bid for a fourth landed campus. ABS's Jessica Russell found out what people of Antigua and Barbuda think about the campus being here. And the best thing ever to happen to Antigua, to have a university right here. 
this man at the West Bus Station has strong opinions on Antigua having the fourth landed campus of the University of the West Indies. Others also spoke positively about the move. I personally think it's about time. It is very costly to send your, your children away to college. I have done that and I know the kind of um, finance you have to invest to get that done. So much of people done from secondary school go to state college and some of them want places for go. And if you don't have the money to send them overseas, it's easy for them to stay here. However, some have their concerns. No, it's a good idea to have, it is a fourth landing, right? But I think that the location should have been more neutral, like in the Coolidge area. I'm not against Antigua having a campus as an extension of the campuses within the Caribbean, but I'm totally against the using the Five Island School for, as a facility to facilitate such things. The Five Islands campus was originally built with the intention to be used as a school. However, the Gaston Brown administration has decided to use the structure to facilitate advanced learning. UWE currently has landed campuses in Jamaica, Trinidad, and Barbados. Jessica Russell, ABS News. That's just going to an update on the baby abandoned on the gallery of a home in Grey Hill Saturday morning, the 30th of March. Baby Doe, as we'd call, call him, now almost three months old, is thriving and still in the care of staff of the Mount St. John's Medical Center. They're awaiting results of recent medical tests for him to be cleared. ABS's Sherilyn Beezer has an update on what may happen to him when he's discharged. Baby John Doe will no longer be referred to as such. Because recently we would have had his birth registered. He was named Elijah Matthew Aaron. Director of Family and Social Services, Alethea Byers, says he was named after strong men in the Bible. Adoption may be in the cards for the future. However, foster parenting is the first option. Presently, we're looking at um, prospective foster parents for Elijah. We have to see how this person is bonded with the child how the child is being cared for before we think about um, going full-blown adoption. She explains foster parenting, which is not permanent. Foster parents is to bring the child into your environment, care the child as if the child would have been your own, but with a view that the child can be removed from you at any time because it's not your child. This also affords the opportunity for the maternal mother to come forward. The mother still has time and can come forward. And we will be glad to assist her. Just come to the Family and Social Services, our call, our hotline number, uh, which is 464-7421, and ask to meet with someone. Elijah was only 10 days old when he was left in a box on the gallery of a resident in Gray Hill, dressed only in an adult T-shirt. Cheryl Lynn Visa reporting for ABS News. And of course, we'll give you updates on him as soon as we find out anything, how, how he's doing. In other news tonight, as the nation and family of Mary Geo Quinn continues to mourn her loss, one cannot shy away from her legacy left behind in the field of teaching and education. ABS's Leah Norville sat down with Quinn's youngest daughter, Lydia, as they reflected on how she impacted so many students. Mary G. O'Quinn was born in 1931 to George and Eugene Hampson in Winthrop's village, which is now Coolidge. In December 1946, she was picked out of her class to be trained as a teacher at the age of 16. She was very passionate about writing and about teaching. She had teaching in her blood, natural teacher, and so that is why that was her career. Quinn served as an educator and the principal for many schools, including Golden Grove, Villa, New Winthrop's, Five Islands, Pilgrim High, and Holy Trinity in Barbuda. As a teacher, very strict, very matter-of-fact, um, but very thorough and very loving. Her passion and natural knack for educating touched the lives of her students, many of who saw her as an influencer and a lifesaver as she showed them a better path. Lots of her students today still remember her she would take them under her wings. It's like she adopted them. Quinn is a household name in Antigua and Barbuda, shaping the lives of many. She has been an inspiration to many writers and budding poets, and the mark and legacy she left as an educator on the educational landscape 
will be around for a very long time. She was chosen to be a teacher. I don't know if she herself chose teaching. It chose her and she stuck with it and she did well with it. Leon Norville, ABS News. Well, the Caribbean Challenge Initiative, CCI, and the Caribbean Biodiversity Fund, CBF, launched their annual week of activities at Jolly Beach Resort today. ABS's Leon Norville was in attendance. Here's what he found out. So we're going to focus on two main um, key areas. The first one is the status of conservation of our marine resources um, throughout the Caribbean. More than three dozen participants gathered for the opening ceremony of the Caribbean Challenge Initiative, CCI, and the Caribbean Biodiversity Fund CBF presentations. We're also going to talk about the financial resources that are needed to keep those um, natural resources available for current and future generations. Many participants say they have high expectations. From here, what we will get is to find out what is the roadmap, where are we going and what it is we should be really focusing on and really being specific rather than being too broad. We're, we're learning, we're a new organization, um, we're very excited to be here and so it's one of the things that is really great about preservation of the environment is that it is hugely important right now. It's just really great to be here to be able to meet partners um, and seek funding so that we can expand and continue the great work that's already happened. The CCI and the CBF launched in 2008 with the goals of efficiently conserving and managing at least 20% of the environment by 2020 and creating reliable funding in the Caribbean for conservation initiatives. Leon Norville, ABS News. Good, making a difference out there. That's fabulous. Indeed. Awesome. All right, Welcome, Terry. I have some sports to tell you about. Okay. Not very good news for West Indies fans uh, all across the region. A big blow to win the semi final hopes in cricket's World Cup today. I'll tell you more about that story when we come back. Stay with us. <laughs> 